Hello everyone and welcome back to the Join Dota League Season 2. This is the Asia Region Division 1 uh, Playoffs. And this is the Upper Bracket Finals. Uh, this is in the uh, this is in the series that determines who moves from the Division 2 up to the Division 1. And this is Game 3 of the Best of 3 between Immunity, Dota, and Insidious uh, Idol. So, in the first game we saw on the back of three supports really and the core Rasta as well as the Meepo uh, bringing immunity to <coughs> excuse me so um, we saw the three supports as well as the core Rasta and the Meepo bringing immunity up to a win and then in the last game the pocket sniper pick allowing Insidious to well turtle it out and eventually just take some good team fights so he could just never kill the sniper after he had a lot of gold and a lot of damage and Really difficult to deal with him. He had a very smart item build as well, going for uh, the Scotty that allowed him to really survive a lot of circumstances which, in which he probably would have died uh, with the Blink Hexes and things like that. But Radiant still, we're going to be going into a Game 3. Been an exciting series so far. And Immunity, they keep their bans the same. They ban out the Lycan and the Brewmaster, whereas Insidious, they ban out the Batrider and the Meepo. So Doom has now been ignored. With the first pick, Insidious, they pick up the Potom. And the Mutity, they pick up the Shadow Shaman and the Skywrath Mage. And Insidious, they pick up Ten Shadow Demon. So, Shadow Shaman or Skywrath Mage could be run mid. Ten We've seen minutes. both of them in this series so far. I think the Rasta was a little bit more successful. Uh, obviously, the was on different teams, of course. So, kind of got to take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. But we'll have to see. And in the meantime, still Shadow Demon and Mirana. Very, very good in its own right. But Insidious is probably going to ban out Wraith King. And then Mutity might just ban out Tinker. Apparently they just really hate Tinker, even if they have a lot of heroes that are good at dealing with them. But Radiant Side Tinker is pretty good. I'm not sure if Insidious have um, a particularly good Tinker player. But, so, could be pretty good. Uh, you don't necessarily need a particularly good Tinker player. Also, just, he stalls out games. And Insidious showed in that last game, if they're able to just stall out the game, they can do this fine. They ban out Carl. Uh, Invoker not going to be seen in this game, which I think is, is pretty interesting in general if you're Dire, because I think a lot of heroes that lane pretty well against Invoker do pretty well in Dire, uh, namely Templar Assassin and Puck. Uh, Templar Assassin be a being able to take Roche and then... Well, actually, I take that back. Puck on Dire actually doesn't do a whole lot. Never mind, I, ju I just don't think Invoker is really that big of a threat. I think he's really Five good, but I think it's pretty easy to deal with him. So they ban out Invoker and Tinker, whereas uh, Insidious, they wait until the fourth ban to ban out the Doombringer, a hero that they prioritize pretty highly. But, Sniper's still in the pool. We'll see. If they do get a Sniper, I suspect that it won't be a last pick, and if they do, they'll probably pick up something like a Storm or a Clockwork to really try to deal with him. So, with the Tinker ban out, Immunity goes ahead and goes for the next pick. Whether they want to go push or not, they could pick up a Vengeful Spirit uh, if they would like to. They pick up a Gyrocopter. So, a hero that we don't really see too, too much of. Uh, he's a good BKB building hero. He's really scary later on. He's one of the best Rapier carriers as well. Uh, but when he doesn't have Flat Cannon or, or BKB, he's not really the scariest. But he still farms very well. He, he's kind of like a, a worse Luna in a lot of ways, but... I, I almost always will prefer a Luna, but still Gyrocopter going to work out for them. They could go for some Wombo combos, such as uh, getting a Darkseer, if they would like to. But Viper going to come out for Insidious, and that's just that, that's purely a we want to win the mid lane. Whoever's in the mid lane, whether it be Shadow Shaman or your Skywrath Mage, they're going to be having a really tough time against a Viper because they're very squishy. They don't have a whole lot of uh, armor as well. And Viper, when he picks up something like an early mech, it makes him very hard to out-harass, not to mention the harassment, especially from the Skywrath Mage, where you throw an arcane bolt on him, and then all of a sudden you're taking damage from Corrosive Skin as well. Ten seconds remaining. Plus, Viper, a very fast mech carrier that's a very fast enabler for Insidious, so that would be pretty nice as well. Reserve so Immunity, they, oh, they could pick up like maybe a... Razor here, and we're going to Skyrath support. But it seems like Skyrath support's not really been that popular, at least in the Asian scene. People kind of want to run him mid, which is good. He's a hero that scales very well for him and has a lot of damage. Um, and current, I mean, there are two BKB building heroes, as well as Viper, who generally builds 
here things like mech and pipe, so he gets a fair amount of magic resistance. And even if he once he gets a BKB, it's you know you don't really do a whole whole lot. But then the same argument as I mentioned in the last game, which was BKBs don't last forever late in the game. Uh, yes, I, I said Invoker, or I said Puck on Dire, but Puck actually doesn't have much on Roche. Puck just lanes well against Invoker, is what I was trying to say. But uh, Immunity, they go pick up a Vengeful Spirit. So this is going to be really good for Roche, because they have Serpent Wards, and they also have Vengeance War, not to mention their tower push is very good. That puts Skywrath Mage into the mid lane and Gyrocopter into the safe lane, whereas Insidious, they pick up their offlaner and the Tide Hunter, so they're going to be looking for their last support, whereas Immunity, probably going to be looking for their offlaner. So... I think the offlaners that work very well with Gyrocopter in particular are the ones uh, with good team fight as well as abilities to keep heroes locked in one place. Uh, the two ones that really stick out my mind are Clockwork and Darkseer. I think I already mentioned those. Uh, not to mention being able to call down in Cogs. And Clockwork is just, I still, still think, one of the best offlaners in, in the business. They also could get a Timbersaw if they'd really want to. It would make them be a little bit light on lockdown on their cores. But having that burst damage against heroes uh, such as Viper and Tidehunter, getting that pure damage on Viper is actually really good because he typically just doesn't have a whole lot of Five raw HP. Remaining. And then getting that against a Tidehunter is pretty good as well. But AA going to be banned out. Shadow Demon AA, Marana, pretty good. Not to mention the Ice Blast with the Ravage. Very easy to hit. Pretty difficult to deal with, especially when all your heroes are pretty squishy. Gyrocopter is pretty squishy as well, just in general, even if he does have a BKB. Uh, he needs to get his Satanic up and his Butterfly before he's really feeling, feeling pretty good to be able to deal with those sorts of things. Five seconds remaining. <clears throat> and Bristleback going to be banned out as the offlaner for immunity. That was also an option to go for another carry in their offlane that's pretty tanky and hard to deal with. So... We'll certainly we'll see what they go with, but like I said, Darkseer, Clockwork are the ones that kind of uh, stick out to me. Give them some initiation, give them some element of team fight and crowd control that they really need, I would say. Um, Timbersaw, like I was saying, was a little bit greedy, but I think that could work out pretty well uh, in addition. So we'll have to see. They have about 10 seconds. Uh, I'm a little bit out of ideas, and they go for the Darkseer. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. The combo with the Gyrocopter, Vac Wall, Call Down, Flat Cannon, all works really, really well. They don't have a whole lot of uh, AoE disable, so they can't do something like vacuum people into an overgrowth or vacuum people into cogs. Um, so if you like run a mid-clockwork and he hooks someone, you vacuum all of them over the cogs into it, it's actually a pretty good thing, but it's still going to be very good, not to mention uh, just Ten being able to get a copy of the heroes such as the Viper and the Marana are going to be pretty nice. So the last support going to be coming out for, for Insidious. Uh, they haven't burned into any of their bonus time just yet. So they can uh, pick up Rubik, I think, would be pretty strong here. Uh, Rubik and Shadow Demon, not as great in the laning phase, but still, there are a lot of good spells to steal. Uh, not to mention Nullfield. Actually does a fair amount against all of their magic damage. I think that Nullfield is a little bit underrated late in the game. Uh, so Rubik would be pretty good. Uh, as far as Shadow Demon and the laning phase is concerned, I think that... Lena and Lashrak are very good as well. I think actually Lena, like, I don't know why Lena's not picked. She's so good in the laning phase. She has an incredible intelligence gain. She has a very high single damage nuke uh, that goes through BKB, or single target nuke that goes through BKB late in the game. Um, and, like, I don't, I don't know. Plus, she also has her passive Fiery Soul, which makes it really hard to kill her in team fights, and she can keep her distance. But I mean, people just don't pick Lena because I don't know why. But they pick up Sand King. So securing their team fight, they want to pick something a little bit greedier. So they're going to pick up the Sand King for red once again. And that's going to be good with the Ravage as well. Also Shadow Demon sets up Burrow Strike pretty easily. Uh, but we saw the Sand King was okay. But I'll have to see as everyone disconnects. Uh, looks like we're going to have a rehost. Um... All right, looks like we're going to have a remake here. So I will disconnect. Leave game. All right. We'll, uh, we'll see what's going on here. So it's just going to be, it looks like, an all-pick remake. So everyone's going to have a little bit less time to actually do their level one shenanigans in the jungle.
just waiting, just waiting and waiting. I don't really feel the need to put an overlay up just because of the, it should be part of the VOD anyway. We don't want to miss the draft as part of the VOD, so. Everyone getting a little sneak peek at the behind the scenes work and everything. Looks like something is bugged. All right, cool. So we're getting into the next game. As once again, this is game three of a best of three to determine who moves on to the uh, to division one. This is just the upper bracket finals. This isn't the finals or anything. Mm. But this is game three. So everyone will be picking up their heroes nice and early. Malirio has gotten into the game. And I will use this time to go grab a Dr. Pepper. All right, I'm back. And I'll have my beverage to keep me in through this game three. If uh, the games are anything like they were, it will be a little, little hard to do without any sort of refreshments. I recommend you all also stand up and stretch as well as I have done because it's good to do. So it looks like everyone's got their heroes picked, but not really working out. Looks like we just have to wait until the battle begins in 25 seconds. And Twitch chat, thank you as well for alerting me of any problems or anything that's been going on. That's been very helpful. And also, thank you for joining me in this early morning. It's been two and a half hours already, but it's been pretty nice. It's been some good Dota. I'm also in low priority right now, so uh, I wanted to get a dose of Dota, but I didn't. I couldn't play. Ugh. All right. So everyone's picked their heroes. We're now in the game in this remake. So. Spawning on the radiant side of this game, Insidious able to take that last game by turtling it out with a sniper. We'll see how they do this game. It will be Shagasaurus taking up your Boots first Tidehunter in the off lane. The Shadow Demon will be taked up, taken up by Janssen once again. Uh, Isera going to be playing your Viper in the mid lane with the pulled Tangos. Chu going to be on your Carry Priestess of the Moon. And once again, Red will be playing on the Sand King. Moved up as four through their jungle. It will be Risk playing on your Vengeful Spirit as a support. Balls will be playing as the Carry Gyrocopter. It looks like it will be Shotten on the support age. It will be <clears throat> uh, the Shadow Shaman played by Slicks going into the mid lane. And then in the off lane, it will be your Dark Seer played by Godet. And he's got some pulled tangos as well as Boots versus some Clarity. So maybe not going to go for the Sol Ring build. Maybe going to go for the, the Bottle build. Up, see, pulled tangos all around. And Shagasaurus just looking to spot the rune. Going to be picked up by your Vengeful Spirit. This is actually, this Illusion Rune is one of the best runes for support early on. Just because the early harassment is really good. I think Vengeful Spirit should pick it up. She's got, well actually, the better base damage actually. Yeah, she has the better base damage because she has freaking 27 agility at level 1. It's ridiculous. But she does have pretty bad base damage. Which, I guess that's fair. Because Vengeance Aura is, is a good spell. But they're actually, what's a smoke... From Viper, not sure exactly why. I guess he got smoked while the supports were coming out of the mid lane. That was an accident. But Slicks, he has no escape mechanisms. Disruption going to be there as well. Burrow's track to follow. Poison Touch has already been skilled at level 1. Going to be moving up. Right click's coming up from the Illusions as well. And Slicks is dead. First Blood going to be going the way of your Shadow Demon. So with the Boots first, going to be able to help a lot in the roaming supports. And I know that Potom just can't kill a Darkseer solo. He's already level 2, so he's got Surge. And the Ion Shell, he's going to be doing just fine. So, 1-0 already, going the way of Insidious, and that's also going to help an already hard lane for your Shadow Shaman. Or, sorry, that's going to make a, a hard lane for your Shadow Shaman even harder. We have a, it looks like we have a DC once again. So we have some Dota Cinema here. As far as the warding went down, it looks like there was a Sentry Ward dropped here, as well as a Lane Ward and another Sentry Ward that were dropped. Um, so it looks like all, all the wards from the Dire were placed, whereas wards were placed here. And here for Radiant, just making sure they have vision of the runes as well as the river. It's a little bit unconventional. Actually, a fun spot that I found for ward is uh, right to the right of this tree right here. It's actually a really good ward spot as well, if anyone wants to use that in your next pub game. 
because it's hardly ever going to be dewarded. Shot in his uh, his illusioner is going to. Actually, I just noticed this. Venge and Skyrath are the support duo. How romantic! How cute! They're finally back together. Let's all take a moment to remember this love story. All right. Anyway, moment has passed. So if we're looking in the bottom lane, there was an arrow that actually hit disruption with the burrow strike as well. Got it. He's gonna die. It's a little unfortunate. That's also one of the things when you have the multiple disables. If you can just disable him during the surge duration, the same as Windrun. It's pretty easy to make sure you get the kill on the darks here. Tidehunter, he's also got no points in crack and show. He actually went for an early point in gush, which is a little bit unconventional, especially for an offlane tide. Just because it's really, you don't really have the mana pool to really use Gush too often. It's pretty aggressive as well. Normally you want to be pretty defensive. So, I'm not sure. Also, I mean, Slick just goes out solo to a Ross, to a Viper, because, well, this lane's really, really hard for him. For the reasons Afer mentioned. So, 8 and 3 against 11 for 3. Not to mention when he uses Aether Shock to blast these waves. He also actually had to go stats, because that's just what you got to do to lane up against the Viper. You need that health. But when he uses the Aether Shock, he also just gets Corrosive skinned. It sucks, and he's going for the max skin build. Which is actually the build I usually favor on Viper as well. And he's going ahead and getting a bottle, so not doing something like going for Ring of Basilius and the mech. But smoke up from the supports on the side of immunity. If they're looking to try to gank this Viper, it's really, really needed. They do have a lot of disables, not a whole, whole lot of damage, as Venge is only level 1 still. So she doesn't have any points in Vengeance or, or Wave of Terror. Whereas Red just been stacked in the jungle. Uh, Shadow Demon just going to be pulling as well, and uh, Darkseer has abandoned that lane and actually gone for the jungle himself. The cool thing as well about getting the Darkseer, I mean, this was picked before the Sand King, but you can just go steal the Sand King stacks really, really easily with Ion Shell. Same way that you can do it with uh, an offlane Batrider with Firefly, but Batrider was banned in every single game so far. And it, well, I mean, there aren't going to be any more games after this, uh, at least in this series, so. He, ha he was banned in every game, I can say that for a fact. So... Decent risk. Spotted, surged. There's going to be the shackles as well. Magic missile to follow. But this guy's pretty tanky. The hex is going to be there as well. And the ion shells should be able to secure him. No. Oh, it didn't miss uphill. If Shadow Shaman had missed that uphill, would not have been a kill. The defensive disruption was almost there as well. He's actually in animation for it. And he had the Drinkle Boots move speed to get it. But he pauses the game to contemplate his death. So, one second as I need to sneeze. All right, the sneeze has been finished. Oh God, I have a lot of messages on Skype. So we do have a bit of a DC from Viper, or or from Sand King. So just looking at the gold and the XP, it doesn't really matter. Just all efficiency, kind of swinging to and fro. Gyrocopter farming very well in this safe lane. I couldn't find his portrait for a second. Already has his phase boots up. So with that extra damage, can harass the tide out a little bit more easily. Whereas your safe lane bottom, only 19 for 3, but focused a little bit more on harassing the Darkseer out, making sure that she gets the free lane to herself. And she's going to be going in for a Hand of Midas this game. So pretty good, I think, uh, to get the Hand of Midas this game, just because I don't think that Immunity are going to be looking to really push and end the game super early, even though they do have the mid-Rasta. But this support, even though he comes online very early, he does scale pretty well with farm. So... Tidehunter getting a decent amount of levels as well. Uh, he's about to hit level 3, so there you go. Skills the Kraken Shell. Actually going to eat a Rock Barrage. Concussive Shot is there as well. Homing Missile is going to be there. Oh, the Kraken Shell is not enough. That's where that early point in Gush is really starting to cost him. I'm not sure exactly when he had skilled that. Okay, buy some Magic Six. He's like, screw this. I need to have a Magic Six so that I can live. But it's just, I'm not sure when he skilled it, but if he had just skilled it in the lane. I'm not sure exactly what his intention with it was. But Rasta now has his boots. Viper, he has his bottle. What does he have uh, on the courier? Doesn't have anything on the courier to see yet. Gyrocopter has his ring of Basilius. Uh, we'll, we'll see if he wants to go greedy. Probably he wants to go for the Helm of the Dominator after spotting this Midas coming out from your Priestess of the Moon so that he can stack and farm these Ancients pretty effectively. Uh, he could also go for even something like an MKB in Helm of the Dominator. Just Greedy on heroes like Gyrocopter and Luna in particular, and the, re the reason I always bring up Gyrocopter and Luna is just because they both operate and function very similarly in both their skills and their item builds. 
Their ultimate is a big AoE magical team fight. They typically want to build Butterfly BKB Helm of the Dominator uh, and, fa and you know, your boots, but then beyond that, um, they have a lot of physical damage in an AoE with both Moon Glaze and Flat Cannon. They have a short target disable uh, in both Lucent Beam as well as uh, Homing Missile. And they have a bit of magic damage as well. I mean, Lunar Blessing and Rocket Barrage are the only ways that they don't work out. And Gyrocopter usually just, he'll go MKB, whereas Luna will usually go for something else like a uh, Mantis style. But they're really similar heroes. And in and, and both of those heroes, what, what is considered greedy is like, when do I get BKB? Because BKB is one of those things that just allows you to team fight so effectively. On those heroes, not to mention the health and damage, because those heroes are pretty squishy, works pretty well. Damage is never bad. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to go Midas on the Gyrocopter, especially after picking up his Phase Boots, we could see him go for a hand of Midas, but just stacking the Farming Ancients with Helm of the Dominator is very good, and it's already being stacked up as well. But in the mid lane, the Night Shadow is going to be used on Slicks. Viper Strike is there, he's dead. Gush is there as well, and this is going to be some experience for Stratosaurus, who really needs it. He's almost level 4. Both offlaners have been harassed out, but Darkseer can go farm the jungle, whereas Tide can't. He's actually pretty poor, though, I think. He's only at 1900 net worth. Or was the times at like 1600, but still. More pools coming in. Skyrath Mage getting a few levels here. Vengeful Spirit still roaming around. It looks like she has her boots. No, she doesn't. She just picks up a smoke and a sentry ward. Once she has her boots, her initiation is going to be a lot better. And it's interesting that I, we've seen them max missile. I think in a team with a lot of disables, maxing magic missile is not really the greatest. Just because, like, the damage is great because you get 75 more damage per level, but it's only 0.1 second duration stun per level. And when you have a Rasta, as well as a Skyrath Mage, you have a decent amount of disable. Uh, and I think just going for the Wave of Terror, especially when people have such low armor, does really well. It's an armor reduction of 3, and it scales pretty well, and the mana cost doesn't change. So when you're an agility hero that doesn't have a great mana pool, going up 10 mana for just 0.1 second of stun is not really the greatest, I think. Obviously, Vengeance Sword does push whatever lane you're in, but... It seems like she, she's done with the landing phase, so using Vengeance or leveling that up is pretty nice. So Gyrocopter is farming, and he just he's going for drums. Yeah, he's going for drums. So early fighting build. Going for the, the phase drums. He's also finishing up Arena of Aquila. Probably going to be going for the uh, Helm of the Dominator afterwards just to, just to help farm those Ancients. And just going to be putting off the BKB. That's how he's going to be playing Greedy Wears 2. Did finish up his Hand of Money a little bit early. He has 23 denies. Very, very responsible with his denies. It's almost like he's playing Shadow Fiend and he's trying to deny as much as possible. But Invisibility Rune, going to be spotted top, going to be picked up by Arasta. And Viper is going to be going in for that mechanism pretty soon. He has the Buckler on the Courier. So he's got that up for himself just now. Whereas supports are kind of roaming, everyone just kind of waiting a bit. Both farmers are getting their safe lane farm uncontested. And Potom has a few less last hits, but... That, that's just still carrying over from trying to kill the Darkseer, whereas Balls has just kind of been hitting Creepsy the whole time. And he has turned on his Dream of Aquila. He wants to go ahead and start pushing the lane. He's kind of stopped denying. And as Tide spots this, he moves up towards the top lane. He's like, ooh, experience. Dyer's bottom tower give, give attack. experience, Kotl. Give experience. But still Sand King. He's been stacking the farm in the jungle as well. He's getting close to that Blink Dagger. He actually went uh, for an early TP scroll. And oh wow, never mind. I actually completely, as I was trying to contemplate what he was missing, missed a kill on the Marana. Looks like it was just a magic missile. And nothing was committed. Skyrath Mage is already level 6, so Vengeful Spirit needs to catch up on some levels, and they can drop some snakes down the bottom lane. So the greatest thing for IM there is the fact that now Gyrocopter just gets to farm a lot more whenever there's no farm coming up. And Insidious, they decide, oh, hey, they, they smoke inked our safe lane carry. I think that's a good idea, so they're going to go ahead and go for that. Let's see. Gyrocopter's playing pretty far back, though. He knows that people are missing off the map. And then, and once again, immunity with these Dire Observer Wards are just a little bit more aggressive. Uh, there's a... Insidious did place a pretty aggressive Radiant Observer Ward here to try to spot some fallen. smokes and stuff like that. But the Safe Lane Tower does go down, and, well, that's what Rasta does. Now they have two sets of Mana Boots, so they have a lot of sustain as well. We'll see if Venge goes for Mana Boots as well. She can probably go for something like Tranquils just to get a little bit more move speed to get up uh, for that Magic Missile. 
nice and early. But Moonlight Shadow going to be used, moving towards the top lane. Gyrocopter, he might be in a bit of trouble here. There's a disruption. Soulcatcher is there as well, and he gets Burrow Struck as well. They don't have a Ravage or anything, but the Cauldown's there as well. Balls, he's doing a lot of damage before he goes down, but the Epicenter was committed. Risk comes in. Magic Missile onto Red, and the Mystic Flare. He just blows up. Absolutely, but it's still a carry for a support. Uh, Gyrocopter did finish his drums. He actually had them on the way of the Courier, so after this, he probably just uh, gets a, maybe one more level and just goes down uh, to the bottom and tries to farm up some Ancients. We'll see. Whereas got it. he's uh, still working towards his mech. Just been quietly in the jungle, went for the bottle build as well as his Arcane Boots first, so the mech coming out pretty late, but still going to be at a similar time as the Viper. He didn't do something like go for a No Boots mech, so he's got 1450 gold uh, to work up for, or to make up for just for the mech. Actually, you know, using the buckler on these creeps, I guess to try and make it a little bit harder for this Ross, Ross to the last hit. And he will be going for that early blink dagger as he is saving up 1360 gold. And now the line has been drawn towards the mid lane. They have a smoke, so they're going to be moving with the tide hunter who does have ravage. So he's going to be looking to show it for the first time this game. Uh, let's see if I can open this drink with one hand. This is really difficult. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant top tower. All right, I did it. All right, Smoke Engine coming now. Here's a Shadow Demon. Disruption's going to be there as well. And the Concussive Shot only hits on Tide Hunter, but Ravage is going to be committed. Slick just blows up right away. Gust is going to be onto the Skyrath Mage. He commits a Mystic Flare. Uh, it's completely avoided. The Ancient Seal is on Viper, but he doesn't really care about not getting the Viper Strike. So four heroes mid, able to clean up two for nil. Very successful Smoke Gang coming up from Insidious. And they are looking much better in this game than they have this whole series, at least at this stage of the game. Darkseer has come down to the bottom lane to try to get some juicy farm. Where's Chu? He's TPing up to the top lane. Goes ahead and Midas is a creep. Spots a gyrocopter as well. This is a pretty cool gyrocopter set, by the way. Is this the alliance set that's in the chest? Yeah. That's pretty nice. Well, anyway. Mid lane, going to be a fight. There's another swap as well. Going to be on to Shagasaurus. And he's going to be shackled as well. You know, the Calldown's going to be committed for this. And Ether Shock is going to be able to clean him up. It looks like they're going to be trying to push this wave now. Yeah, because they've, they've got Serpent Ward, so just take the tower. Easy. Five-man mid, take a tower. Vengeance Aura, go Roche, or something. So they commit the snakes. They put double Iron Shell on these creeps as well. But Murano to his use. Burrow Strike on the four. Viper Strike going to be coming in. Going to be used onto the Gyrocopter. Mystic Flare going to be airballed once again. And Shagasaurus going to be able to clean up Slicks right away. He's really squishy. Starfall actually gets that kill there. Balls, he's trying to get out. He's Surge, but Risk. He's Demonic Purge. He's going to go down. Magic Missile going to be going to Viper as well. And all of a sudden... That's a mega kill streak for your Shadow Demon, looking a lot better than he did in the last game. Well, these Burrow Strikes, now I see why they picked up Sand King again. Like, he got a Burrow Strike on three. Jesus, the tower does go down, but at least they get a tower in return. And trading towers against Rasta is kind of the same as, like, trading towers against Lycan or Treats. Usually just not so bad. They're going to try to get the Deny, and Darkseer does secure the Deny. So big win there for IM, despite getting those pickoffs, so about even, I would say, and yeah, EXP only 500 gold, a little bit more efficient for IM, but that's also mainly uh, contested in their offliners, as you have four, four and a half K net worth, whereas you only have two, two and a half net K net worth for uh, the Tide Hunter, and that's just the nature of being able to farm the jungle, whereas Shagasaurus, he didn't really have the levels up in Anchor Smash and Kraken Shell to farm Ancients or, uh, or the neutrals up as early, as you do for a Darkseer, you can actually just throw Ion Shell on a stack and just wait. So, looks like the, I don't know what Balls is going for here. He could pick up a Helm of Iron Will as well as a Morbid Mask or an Ogre Club. Any of the items he would be going for right away, unless he's just going to straight up rush at Demon Edge, which is a little bit uncommon, I would say, because mostly magic damage is really all you're going to need at this point. Uh, mech is finished on the Darkseer, and Mech was finished on Viper a little while ago. They had it in the last fight, but Murana goes down in the jungle. Smoke Gate going to be used, Magic Missile, Mystic Flare going to be able to blow them up. Really punishing her for going this Midas. She really does not have a whole lot of HP. But never mind, as the top falls, takes down the tower with the disruption as well. TP is going to be able to secure him, so both carries going down. Jarocopter a bit higher level, and he actually buys a, an Ogre Club. So he's like, screw this, I'm going BKB. So he doesn't really want to play greedy, so as this game is going to go on a little bit longer, uh, if he doesn't get a whole lot done in the mid game, it's actually going to be really difficult to keep items on par with this Mirana. Like, he's a little... Yeah, he's already out, I mean, out leveled, which is, is to be expected. He can farm the Ancient Stacks, which is great. And he is going to have a little bit of a tower lead just with the nature of having a roster mid. 
but still, uh, it. I think it, he, ha he has a bit of a burden to get something done. Ancient Steel going to be on to the Shadow Demon, but the Burst Strike going to be striking too. He's going to be hexed. There's a Sentry Ward. It's kind of awkward, but the Marana ult, they should know that there's a Sentry Ward there. Surge is going to be used on Dark King himself, and they're going to secure the Deny on the tower. That's really hard to do against Serpent Wards. So, kind of an awkward fight there, but still, everything just, just really even. The biggest just disparity is just Dark Seer and Tidehunter. Tidehunter still does not have his Blink Dagger, or does he? No, he's just a TP school. He's pretty poor. Uh, but the Sand King has his Blink Dagger, so he doesn't necessarily need to be the Blink Initiator, but he definitely is going to have to get it pretty soon. And he doesn't have to go mech this game as the Viper did get it. But Blink Hex, now they should know that there's a ward here as well. And Mystic Flare, no, not going to be there. But ward going to be there. Arrow. Okay, Risk, you saw that coming for like 10 days. But Mystic Flare going to be used just as zoning Mystic Flare, saving his lover. And there's the... Poison stacks, Soul Catcher's there as well, but she earns herself. The right clicks are going to be there as well. Concussive Shot going to be slowing. Mech is there as well. Gush coming in. God, they hate her. You just run into an arrow again. Ultimately, she goes down. Unstoppable for your Shadow Demon. 6 and 0. Oh. What can you say about the difference in this start versus the Shadow Demon we saw last game? Holy crap. He's almost going to have a Force Staff. He should just, just go Dagon. Just go Soul Catcher Dagon. Come on. But. Top tower is still under attack. Balls, he's kind of just farming until he has the BKB. Gonna be great. Well, we'll see what Slick goes for as well. He probably is gonna go for that Agnum Scepter. Usually, I think that's what we saw him build in the first game. Just go for Blink Ags. Pretty good. Rasta, just... I, I usually like more mobility. I think that just going for, like, Blink Force is really good. I like Blink Force on almost everyone. Invoker, Windrunner... You know, Clockwork. In Clockwork, you just go uh, Blink Ag's Force and you just become Spider-Man. It's pretty fun. But he'll probably be going for that Agnum Scepter. Try to get more... <clears throat> get a little bit more out of those Serpent Wars, which are a big team fight utility. They don't have the most physical damage just before they get a lot of items, so... Yeah, they do have the physical damage buff up from the Vengeance Aura, but it's percentage-based, so not a whole lot of people have a whole lot of base damage, except the Skyrath, just because he has the 4 int gain per level. It's Ridiculous. 3.6. Still a lot. But Shadow Demon now has his 4 staff, so he's already more farmed than he was in an entire 56 minute game, basically. And Potomol going to be used top lane. But it was spotted, so Balls just backs off and goes and hides. He really wants to finish his BKB and just TP's mid. To the safety of his own team. Smoke is going to be purchased by Skyrath. They're going to be looking to 5 man smoke. Maybe they go for Roche? Or maybe they're looking towards the jungle. But they do have d Dire Observer Wards there, so now they spot everyone with a Creep Wave. So it looks like they're just going to trade for Roche. So this is a, the classic trade we see, Dire take Roche, Radiant take the Tier 1 Safe Line Tower. We see it almost every, like, one out of two games. Uh, man. So. Not a whole lot to say there. It looks like Marana, she goes ahead and picks up that Maelstrom. I wasn't really looking at her items, but she picks up the Maelstrom. So just standard, standard, standard builds. They're waiting for someone to come try to defend this tower, but then they're going to realize, hey, Roshan has fallen to the Dire. And I'll trade the Tier 1 tower. Dyer's Looks like they don't want to smoke up and uh, try to defend. They're just going to trade that Tier 1, and they're going to be trying to take the Tier Dyer's 2 in the middle lane, it looks like, because they do have level 2 Rasta Snakes. Be pretty good in... Uh, the, did Tidehunter get that last hit? No, Marana got the last hit. Still, that uh, buys Tidehunter his Blink Dagger. That'll be pretty nice for him. A little bit more blink initiation. Looks like they want to trade tier twos, but they can actually just leave Rasta Snakes here and just TP. They, they have a glyph. Do they have TPs on people? Yeah, they have TPs on everyone, so. They can trade this. There's already one TP back coming in from your Darkseer, who has his blink dagger as well. He's got a level two wall and backs out vacuum, so he's sitting pretty. He actually went for uh, just one point in surge. That's pretty nice for him. Uh, to be able to get away with that, but I guess because he was jungling super early on, I didn't need that second point. See, they can probably secure the deny. Are they just letting... I don't really agree with letting this tower go when they have TPs. I guess they didn't have a TP on the Yairocopter. So, I'm going to go in for that. Well, I think that's actually a win for Insidious, getting two towers. But I guess the tower in Roche is... I don't know. I don't know. Because immunity is expected to take towers. They have Rasta. And they also have Ventral Spirit. Like, they're, they've drafted heroes that take towers. They took... They draft Dragon Knight, they draft Windrunner, they draft Shadow Shaman, like, they take towers. So I guess trading towers is, like, 
okay for Insidious, but still, being down to only one outer tier tower is, is pretty difficult to deal with as the game progresses. But Shadow Demon now picks up the early gem. Uh, let's see if he's able to hold on to it this game. Ancient's going to be farmed here. Now Gyrocopter's finished with his BKB, so now they're looking to fight. They'll have BKB on Gyro. He has his drums. He's going to have the Aegis of the Immortal as well. So should be pretty easy for him as long as he... Yeah, there's uh, four staff is on the... <clears throat> four staff for your Skyrath Mage as well as the BKB for the Gyrocopter. So it looks like they're going to be trying to break the high ground here. And then by the time it's ready, well, Rasta Snakes are going to be off cooldown as well. Holy crap, that cooldown image. God, he looks intense. That's Gyrocopter's face. I've never seen such an angry old old man. Wow. All right. Well, anyway. So the big team fight utilities are all coming up. Mirana doesn't necessarily have a key item, but she does have a little bit of damage. Uh, key items are pretty much all up for Insidious. Uh, Red does have his blink. Doesn't have his four staff just yet, but blink on the tide. He's going to be going for that pipe of inside as well. And it looks like a... Viper, as expected, will be going for that Aghanim Scepter. There is already a Hyperstone up on Chu, actually, so he's farming pretty well. With uh, maybe a couple more last hits in that Midas, he's actually going to have that in about 500 gold. But the smoke up, and there's the Blink Hex. Wards are going to be popped immediately. Chu, he's going to get Ancient Steel, but the Ravage is going to disrupt everything. Go to it. Oh, the Vacuum into the wall. It actually only gets one, though. The Epicenter doing a lot of damage as well as the Call Down. There's so many illusions. Everyone still walked through the wall anyway. And all the illusions doing a lot of damage. There's the shackles as well. Viper, he's going to go down. That's a 10 second BKB. Balls gets a double kill. Only Darkseer goes down. If the wall was a little bit better, he could have gotten four in there right, right away. And Well, there is only buyback on Viper, but this should be at least a tier three. Everything just happens so fast. God, it reminds me of my girlfriend in college. But anyway... Looks like they're going to be forcing a glyph out at the very least. Respawn timers are still pretty short here. So it's going to be pretty difficult. Rasa did commit the snakes in the fight. So he's not going to be able to use them for this tower. Balls is just eating a lot of shadow poison stacks. And he doesn't have the Helm of the Dom or anything, so he can't really regen too much. But he almost has a permanent DD rune when he's around uh, Vengeful Spirit. So it's pretty nice for him. But we'll see if he goes for uh, either the MKB, the Butterfly, or the Helm of the Dominator next. Uh, as he can just free up the TP scroll or the Ring of Aquila. But he still does have an Aegis. Uh, so he could, with this Aegis, go for something ballsy like the MKB. Uh, if he can farm it up in the next... I don't know. I don't actually know how long until it's going to expire. I'm always used to doing this, but not when I'm not playing. But still, they even got to plant an aggressive Observer Ward, but too bad it's going to be dewarded. And still, more defensive wards from Insidious. They, they just show that they are so defensive. They always want to make sure that they can just turtle out get their farm, be able to uh, show they have access to their jungle. Holy shoot, Rasta has a lot of money. What is, is Does he buy a Bloodstone? Okay, he buys, that, buys a point booster. Could be a Bloodstone, he has mana boots, but... <laughs> I'm like, what is he saving for? Is he just going to go to, like, Radiance? Like, come on, man. But Bolnir now finished up on your Priestess of the Moon, so she's got a decent amount of attack speed already. Only 500 mana pool. And she didn't go for the drums, but she's uh, at 272 attack speed. Really not that bad, especially for someone like a bottom that this has pretty pretty shitty attack speed early on. Ancient's going to be stacked as well. Or no, actually just going to be farmed because it's actually not anywhere, anywhere near the stacking time. Four staff is almost done. No, okay. I was thinking he had the Ring of Health, but five man smoke going to be moving towards the middle lane from Immunity. They're spotting out the Viper here. And it's going to be a blink. There's a Hex right away. Homing Missile is there as well. Shackles. Mystic Flare committed. BKB committed as well, but there's a Ravage. Well, I guess the BKB was there. Was well, nice because he didn't get ravaged, but defensive Moonlight Shadow gonna be able to say that it's just a Viper being picked off. Wall was that is a weird wall. That is a don't pass this line wall, or else. Well, so there's gonna be a copy of you. Hold on, I want to get a cinematic view of this wall. Do not pass. All right, anyway. Smoke on Sand King, so they're going to be looking to do a smoke wrap around, probably. A couple of wards have gone up as well, but they're totally being watched. The Darkseer wall's not up, neither is Rabbit, so some big team fight ultimates are not here. There is, oh, there's a swap immediately on the Chu. Chu just gets blown up right away. Does he have buyback? No, he does not. There's the Epicenter, going to be catching all of them, though. And then one of them goes down. Ross on very low HP. Balls, he doesn't care. He has it. No, the Aegis expired! 
The Aegis has expired. The Aegis was reclaimed. Gyrocopter goes down. Shot and he throws down the Ancient Seal onto Red, but Viper's going to be able to chase him out. Does he have the Viper Strike? Oh, the TP. TP's going to be able to get him. Smart TP there as well. But Chu just blown up immediately. Whew. Wow. All right. I'm so glad my roommates aren't home. Uh, but anyway, this is going to be an Ags now finish for Slicks. I'm not sure if he had it in that last fight or not. Red, he's got his four staff coming out to himself. Yep, four staff coming out to himself. And Darkseer, he's got a lot of gold. Probably going to go for that Shiva's guard. Pretty useful against both Viper and Marana. Uh, just the attack slow is, I mean, 40% is a lot. Uh, so... And it's just in an AoE, you don't even have to use the active. Plus, just one of the best items on Darkseer. It gives him a lot of armor, gives him a lot of it. Uh, Viper, almost done with the Zagnum Scepter. After that, probably goes for that BKB. Uh, or even, even a pipe, but I think Tide was building the pipe. Yeah, Tide's building the pipe. He's already got the headdress and the cloak. Got his Blink Dagger. So, everyone's getting their mobility items. As far as Chu, he's already 2 and 4, so you don't turtle out a game with Marana the same way that you do a Sniper, but... He's got a decent amount of catching up to do, but at least with his minus, he's staying on par with the net worth uh, with the Gyrocopter, who has picked up the Demon Edge, so he is going to be going straight for that Monkey King bar. Wants to get a lot of damage, and God, he's already hitting for 200 right now, and that's without the Vengeful Spear near him as well. The Gyrocopter hits hard, in fact. Did, did he get, like, a, a agility gain buff or something? Because I feel like he doesn't really hit this hard at this stage of the game. Uh, Vengeful Spear, now it's, uh, Risk, he's going to pick up his own gem, and... I'm such a big fan of this. Both the supports, when they pick up an early gem, just to make sure they can seize the map control with the dewarding. Uh, and you can always just be safe with it. You can just go do a round of dewarding and put it back in base. It doesn't matter. And if you buy sentry wards, if you buy um, just four sets of sentry wards, you almost spot a gem anyway. So almost better to just do that. All right, so... Looking at more items here. I think that... Okay, BKB can be coming out upon him. I think she really needs that, because there's just so much magic damage and disable. When we saw in that last game, and that last fight when she got swapped, I mean, swapped go, swap is going to go through BKB, but at the same time, just being hexed and shackled right away, and getting... It's just such a huge burst of magic damage. Most of the physical damage right now is just coming out from wards. Uh, because Gyrocopter, yeah, he does hit pretty hard, but he's not the one that's really going to be bursting down too much. So Ancient Sat going to be taken out as well. They're going to be stacking it. This is just... Oh God, Gyrocopter just gets so much with this because he doesn't have a Midas or anything. He doesn't even have a Helm of the Dominator. This is just his support stacking for him. And it looks like they just want to posture uh, and get the Noak Source on. And that fight would have gone really, really differently, especially if the Aegis had not expired in the middle of that fight. And it is really hard to watch the clock in moments like that. Like, hey, Aegis is going to... Like, soon trademark, right? And you just you fight, and then you just hope it doesn't. And sometimes it does, and well, you lose a fight. So, Roshan I'm going to be respawning in about a minute, and as well, uh, Insidious they know this, so they're moving up towards the Roche pit. Considering the start Ross had too, he's making a huge recovery. Like he's actually ahead of the Viper in net worth, which is really really impressive. I, get, I mean, you, you get that just by being Ross because you get a lot of tower last hits, but still pretty nice. Let's see, Arrow was scouting Roche. That's like a third of his mana pool. Another Arrow to scout. MKB now done on Gyro, so that's a very appreciable... God, he gets so much damage. That's a very appreciable amount of damage in this upcoming fight. No one really wants to do anything. And remember, no one can really solo Roche. They don't have someone that can just go in and do it while the rest of the team just sits out and waits. And now they force a TP out from Red. He doesn't have any points in Caustic Finale, so he can't exactly push... Uh, this lane as quickly as he'd like, and everyone's going to back up. Because they're thinking Roche is not up. But Immunity is playing more patiently, and they walk in right as Roche responds. Mm -hmm. By the way, Plate Mail picked up for uh, Darkseer, so probably looking up towards that Shiva's Guard, as previously mentioned. And now, oh, well, Roche is going to go down. This is going to be an Aegis, but actually, it, they were spotted walking in. And the movement. Is there a Dire Observer Ward? They just know that everyone's missing. So they're scared. Moonlight Shadow is going to be used as well. And they're going to be able to D-Ward, so now they know. They're not, now they know that they're there because the D-Ward was there. And they're saying, alright, let's just go push the bottom lane. Maybe we can catch people rotating. Let's see, Curry moving towards the secret shop. It's going to be buying the Ring of Health for Tide to finish up 
Uh, his Hood of Defiance, he's not going to finish up the pipe. Oh, he actually has a main fly. Oh, never mind. Blink. Ravage is going to be in, but BKB's up on balls and red. He's going to get a burst cycle. How does he get this epicenter on everyone every game? He's already gotten two kills. He actually is going to get away in the backside of the fight. Mirana is shackled up, but the Molnir charge. No, that was actually the Viper. The Molnir charge is actually doing a lot of damage. Three are dead on the side of immunity. Swap is going to be there as well. Viper's going to go down. He actually gets mini bashes all up balls. He's going to go down barely a, like any health and chew. Man, to secure that kill. That's a double kill. That's a team wipe. Coming out for Insidious. God, these... Red. He always gets burrow strikes and epicenters on three or four heroes. This is absolutely absurd. And it's, it's winning them these team fights. I, like, I... Like, I saw even just in chat, like, some people were talking about the last pick Sand King in the last game, but he wasn't really, you know, put in the best circumstance in the last game, where he's just showing us, like, what he can do really well. And Gyrocopter... This is also the kind of thing when you go for a BKB early, it's going to be mashed down pretty quickly. By the way, Tide has his pipe done in 50 gold, so he'll be able to have that. That does, it does cost 50 gold Dyer's for that, right? Tower is under attack. Pipe. Yeah, 900. Actually, I don't know why that's even there. But anyway, Dyer's Blink Dagger now up on attack. your Shadow Demon as well, so now he has Blink Force, as well as Blink Force on the Sand King, so a lot of initiation range coming out, especially with the Tide Hunter who also has a blink, and then you have the Moonlight Shadow as well. And you can't always have detection. People are like, oh, well, you know, Moonlight Shadow, you just counter, you just get detection. It's like, you can't always have that. Uh, it's just impossible to completely wear off the whole map. And yeah, they do have a gem and everything, but it's still, a, you can catch people out. And for nothing else than using it to, to go by wards, or to, to pass by wards. Blink? Well, there's a gush. Arrow's gonna be coming up as well. Looks like it's gonna be happening. Oh, the burst strike on the two, but the blink hex is gonna be coming in as well. Server one's gonna be in, but the vacuum only gonna be able to get two through the wall though. There's a pipe of insight popped, and people aren't gonna be taking too much damage. The BKB's popped from Gyro. He's gonna be chasing after Red, but Red, he's got the moonlight shadow. He's got his blink and burst strike as well. And yep, he's gonna be able to get away. Oh, never mind. There's a roster there. Surprise, mother effa. And he's gonna die to the arcane bolt. Viper strike on your eventual spear, but she gets surged. Oh, but Arrow's going to be hitting balls. He gets earned right away. They don't really want to walk through wards and a wall. But Chu's like, hey, money. Actually, can't even one-shot those wards. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Gains a level, so now he can uh, one-shot those wards. Bloodstone, actually, may be coming out for your Sky with Mage. I was thinking this was going to be a Rod of Atos, but it looks like he'll be going for the Bloodstone this game. All right. I think it's good if you can get it early or... And if you're ahead, or if you just get it super late game after you have like your mobility and like your Atos, but looks like we'll be going for that first. But there are there have been a lot more kills happening in this game on the side of I am, so a little bit better. And also the Skyrath Mage was on the side of I am, not on the side of uh, Insidious, or it was on the side of Insidious last game, not on the side of I am. There could be a fight now. Blink! Ravage gonna be getting on almost everyone. Epicenter is gonna be channeled as well. Red. The BKB comes up from Jar, but the vacuum coming into the call down. Epicenter doing so much though. And it's two down already. Goto, he didn't have wall for that fight as well. He's going to have to blink away. That Observer Ward spotting them super easily. Slicks, he's going to get Gush, going to get Viper struck as well. He's, he's dead. He tries. But, wow. That, that's just the power of that blink initiation I was talking about. Arcane a Concussive Shot finally going to be able to find him, but still... Now that's a... Tower is I thought it was a, an item coming off the sink, but now he's sitting on... Oh wow, why is sinking so poor? I would think he would have at least like a Helm of Iron Will or something, but... That's going to be an Aegis going the way of Insidious. So, Viper, he can start working towards his BKB. Arrow going to be used to scout. I'm not going to see anyone. Well, actually, Darkseer comes in, uses the wall, gets the vacuum as well. It's going to be Airball with Soul Catchers there as well. He's not going to be slowed because he has the Surge, but the Swap and the Magic Missile are going to be hitting your Shadow Demon, but he silenced the Ancient Seal that's keeping him from disrupting himself. Red, he comes in, he Blink Burrow Strikes, but he's going to eat an Urn Charge. There's an arrow going to be coming in. It's not going to hit anyone. Gush is going to be on the Risk as well. He's going to feed a Gem. Mystic Flare onto the Titan, but he has Kraken Shell on a pipe. He doesn't care. Well... This, things are very quickly turning for Insidious here, and this just all that blink initiation coming in. And the BKB just getting so short for Jar, already down to five seconds. It's going to be a four-second BKB soon, and he has to build a home of the Dominator, he has to build a butterfly before he starts thinking about uh, taking that BKB out. And that was also, there was a DD on Viper as well, unless he just picked that up. He just picked that up, so never mind. He's using a DD to farm Ancients. 
Also, Deanie Rune looks ridiculous on Viper. He turns into a kite. Because he has, like, the wingspan connecting. You see that? He turns into a kite. I just, I just think it looks funky. Uh, Shiva's Guard going to be picked up now in 20 gold. Now he has it. Let's see, Gyrocopter, what does he have coming out to him? Just a scroll. Every time I see the courier, I'm like, oh, it's a big item, and then people are just bringing TP scrolls to themselves. I'm always so disappointed. But Bloodstone is finished on your Skyrath Mage, so this is pretty risky. He is 7 and 2, so if he gets a decent amount of kills with this, it's going to work out pretty well. He's been keeping his distance pretty easily. And he did go for a 4 staff first, so it's not like he's going Bloodstone first, like some of those pub game storm spirits that go for, like, no, no uh, electric vortex and Bloodstone first. They just try to zip and hit people with overload and go bloodstone. I'm like, oh, come on. Go Orchid. It's better. But that's, that's, a, that's another thing. That's just woes of a scrub like me uh, playing in pub games. But Dark Seer is still just farming up the jungle. He farms it up pretty quickly. He does not have a TP scroll. I mean, you can just go and buy one at the side shop here. But now we enter this age where everyone just kind of postures carefully. Really annoying to, uh, to deal with if you are Either of these teams, because there's gems. Uh, the gem was fed by the Ventral Spirit, and let's see, is it sitting in base? Did someone recover it? Where's that other gem? Is it on their courier? No. Where's that gem? Also, Viper going for a heart instead of BKB. That also works out very well. He's going to be very hard to bring down, because he's going to have so much magic resistance as well. And Blink Ravage going to be on the slick right away. Gush as well. Viper Strike going to be committed. He's not going to get any of his spells off. He even gets Nether Swapped, but Risk, he's just going to back off. Tried to save him, but he couldn't. Sand King picks up an urn. Really aggressive from him, instead of going for the Veil. Just wants that extra managing region. Wants to sustain as well for these fights to make sure they never really have to go back, as long as they're getting kills. A Ravage was committed there, so the team fight's still there, but they have an Epicenter. And these epicenters have been amazing from the Sand King. Shadow Poison is going to spot out the Darks here as well. Cancels his blink. A little bit annoying there. And Mystic Shot, or not Mystic Shot, Jesus, what is it called? Arcane Bolt is going to be thrown onto Viper. He doesn't care, actually. I think Skyrath cares a bit more because <laughs> Corrosive Skin is kind of a bitch. A bottom, she's going to be going for an MKB, it looks like. Arrow, balls, he's just standing there. He gets hit by a five second arrow, but I can't really follow up. Just showing him you mean business. Good job, Chu. Leap, leaps forward. Ross is already back up. So, looks like they ultimately don't even get anything out of it. Don't even force a glyph. They just get a bunch of time where no one was spent farming. So it looks like they'll try to just finish the heart up on Viper. And if they finish the heart up on the Viper, then their next fight's going to be really good. Especially just, they've shown they can do a lot with the team fight coming out from both Ravage as well as the Epicenter. So getting someone that's really tanking the front lines. Uh, is what, and can Viper Strike every 12 seconds is going to be really helpful for them. Plus, hopefully they can get that before the Aegis expires, not do the thing that uh, IM did, where they go to take a big team fight, and all of a sudden they have no Aegis. So. He is going to be going for that Helm of the Dominator. He has picked up his Morbid Mask. I highly doubt it's going to be a Mask of Madness or a Vlad's. So going to be a Helm of the Dominator. Coming out for him pretty soon. He can buy it. I'm not sure if he's just saving for buyback. Uh... It's whatever. Sentry Ward's going to be coming out for your Skywrath Mage. We're already 40 minutes into this game. It feels a bit shorter, but I think it's almost a bit with just with the item progressions. It's kind of been a bit slow, I think, just in general. There's been a lot of times when everyone's just kind of sitting behind towers, not farming. So, item progression a little bit slow, but still working out for them. Viper almost has the heart, has a recipe going to the secret shop, so he's going to try to farm up about 200 more gold and then go ahead and get that heart of Tarask and then try to fight with that. Meanwhile, it looks like it's the word go for I am coming. Well, choose farming these ancients. Getting pretty close to the Daedalus or the MKB. I think the MKB is probably just going to be the name of the game just because you expect uh, Gyrocopter to go for Butterfly as one of his core items. Gem is up by Sand King. That's actually Risk's gem. So they actually, oh, they have double gem. I just guess I just didn't even notice that, but was that always up? Yeah, I guess so. I'm probably just blind. But we're looking at the EXP guard. It's still a very, very even game. Uh, the EXP a little bit in favor of Insidious, and that's just a product of taking some better team fights. And Aegis is actually going to be reclaimed in 30 seconds, so the heart comes up, but Aegis is just going to disappear. So I guess they waited a little bit too long. Maybe it's just going to disappear in this fight, and they're not going to notice. We'll have to see. 
But everyone's back in the defensive position here. We'll have to see. There's some sentry wards set out as well, but those are going to be instantly dewarded by any of the, the two gems on both the supports. And the tower just goes down for free. So, don't want to take that tier 2 tower. Or take a, take a risk defending that tier 2 tower. Balls is pushing the top tier 2. So maybe they tried to trade that before they try to really commit to a high ground defense here. We'll have to see. It's being pinged by Tidehunter. And Balls is just focusing the tower. He'll, he'll be able to take that down. So he gets the tier 2 tower. At the very least, it's a trade. And Balls, or Tidehunter says, let's push up the top lane. Let's go ahead and get this tier 2 tower and clear a pathway to Roche just because the Viper Aegis just expired. So MKB now done for your Marana. So now she probably goes into something like the Butterfly. Room. I'm, I'm actually really surprised that none of these agility heroes have gone for Butterfly, except for uh, the Marana in the first game. But Smoke going to be coming up from IM, as they know that, well, they backed up. Is their Observer Ward? Their Observer Ward is going to spot their movement here towards the drone before it's dewarded. But we're going to have another 5v5 engagement. The BKB is only 4 seconds, 5 seconds. For your gyrocopter, he's still the only one with a BKB as well. And also, if Skyrath dies, that's a lot of bloodstone charges he's going to lose as well. Which is a little, like, it hurts because you don't really want to invest in a bloodstone if you're going to lose charges. But the ward is spotting them. Nether Swap is going to be there, but then there's BKB popped right away. Ravages there, Molnir charges on him as well. But the burst strike still catches like two or three. Mystic Flare going to be airballed as well, but the vacuum wall is there. Serpent Wars doing a lot of damage here. Viper, he's just sitting on the front lines. He has a heart. He doesn't really care. Maybe he does care if he's going to his son in the Serpent Wars, but um, Moonlight Shadow going to be used defensively. And Rasa is the only one to get away. That epicenter. He catches all of them every time. Well, Skyrath Mage goes down. He's already back up. He actually used the Bloodstone Suicide. Still not even enough to win his fights. And, man, that is... The, the, the Blink Initiation as well as the team fight from Ravage and, and Epicenter is just doing so much work. They don't even have a Veil. They don't have a Veil. They don't have an Ags or anything. They have so much magic damage and... I accept sinking just like one shot by avail. It costs what, 2250? Where is it? 2670. Whatever. But now bottom tower is going to go down. Buybacks are up. But the team, team fight ultimates were used. Wall is on cooldown. Uh, cooldown is already back up as it always is. Wards are not back up. The pipe is coming up. Takes a concussive shot, doesn't really care. And red putting himself in a really good position. Venge buys another gem Dyer's as well. Viper Strike was was contemplated. Glyph is now forced. Wave of Terror is there as well to try to deter a little bit. But Shadow Demon, eh, he was able to blink out. Arrow's going to be spot. It's going to hit on Risk, but no follow-up. And they're going to back off because they know that Roche is going to be coming up in a, in a little bit. And losing a big team fight right now to a Dire means that they can get Roche. Actually, they're going to try to re-engage here because Epicenter is back up in 17 seconds. Ravage is not up just yet. But Red is just kind of winning these fights just with his own epicenters, pretty much. Because they don't have a pipe. Like, like Darkseer went for the Shiva's Guard instead of a pipe, and what is it really doing for them? Like, it's good against right-click carries such as Viper and, and Marana, but most of the damage that's coming out is actually just from putting the freaking Molnir charge on Tide and having him be focused, as well as the epicenter. Uh, so, I, I think I would have liked to pipe a little bit more, but so be it. They are where they are. They're going to have to try to do what they can. And Nether Swap coming in from Risk, but he's going to go down right away. Chewy gets four stepped in right away. Gush is going to be able to clean him. Vacuum in the wall, going to be able to hit three, but Chew pops his BKB. Balls pops his BKB as well. Serpent Wards are going to go down. Ancient Seal. What a long range shackle. Shadow Shaman going to be able to end that streak and get 750 gold. But currently just a Viper for a Vengeful Spirit. A couple Dyer's ultimates coming into there. Tide Illusion just right chilling. And there's a Disruption as well. Going to be on to your Gyrocopter. He doesn't have a BKB. Those mini bash is doing a lot as well. Oh, the Molnir Puck. Oh, no, but the Ravage. It just came off cooldown. Gus is going to be on this Sodden as well. And he's going to now. the double kill for Chu. And the Serpent Ward's doing a lot of damage, but they don't really care. That's a three for one. Chu is very low health as well as the Sand King. Everyone's earning themselves and TPing out. They can earn real health. Boots of Travel purchased by your Marana as well. So she wants to keep this Hand of Midas. Gosh, she is rich. These nice team fights have just been amazing for Chu. He's gotten almost all the kills, and uh, this Sand King he can uh, he can one shot buy his Veil of Discord as well. Just solid magic stick. He actually just buys wards because he's a true champ. He's a true Asian hero. And Rasta he has a lot of gold. Maybe he wants to go for a fresher. Just wants to hide it. But 
I'm not sure what he goes for. Maybe he needs to just go for a freaking Scythe of Ice or a Force Staff or something, but I think they just need more mobility on the side of, of immunity. Just They're getting outmaneuvered in these team fights, and Ventral Spirit is... Ah, risk is so poor. Now, Sheeta's Guard and a Pipe up on your Tidehunter. He's really, really hard to bring down now. Now, he can start building his Refresher. Uh, Darkseer, he's got a lot of gold. Hopefully, he builds a Pipe for his team. Um, it is a little bit dangerous because if you get hexed, I and mean, there's no hex, but if you get hexed, then both the mech pipe and Shiva's are, well, both the mech and pipe primarily are, are muted in your inventory. It's not like you're playing against a Doom or anything, but I, I think he needs to build the pipe for his team. Hello, the Dominator actually still not finished. Balls actually just went for a casual Morbid Mask. I think this is going to have to be a Rapier game for him. He's really far behind. Like, he probably just has to go, like, Butterfly and Rapier or something. Uh, Gyro, one of the best Rapier carriers there is, and maybe he doesn't even want to go Butterfly because there's the MKB, but it's still a lot of DPS, even it... Because the evasion isn't just the best thing about Butterfly. Like, if someone has an MKB, and maybe you're a hero that doesn't necessarily have to get evasion, like Bristleback or Dragonite or something, like, yeah, it's fine. But on, on some agility heroes, Butterfly's just way too good to pass up. Heroes like Gyrocopter, Anti-Mage, Luna, uh, heroes like that works really, really well on. So I guess he's just putting it off. Maybe he wants to finish his Satanic first, but the absolute top priority is to make sure that he has buyback. Which everyone does. Everyone a little er, a little short of gold on the Dire side, mainly the supports as well as the Rasta. And this is where I'm thinking, like, this Bloodstone pickup didn't really do much. He actually looks like Skyrath has to go for the pipe. Darkseer's like, screw you, man, I'm going to get my Aghanim Scepter, which, which is also a good pickup just because the extra damage coming out from the two right-click carries is going to be really good to take out the squishy supports, but if Sand King comes in, gets the Burrow Strike, gets the Epicenter as well, that persists after he dies, he doesn't care. He's already done his job if he gets that Burrow Strike disabled, which he, pff, he's f doing a fucking excellent job, like, you kidding me? But everyone just kind of grouping up his five. Chew, going towards the mid lane, he's got a lot of money. And they don't necessarily have the risk-free tower siege that uh, the Rasa does, but they do attack. have the ability to scout Roche, and they've got the map control now because they have the gems. Wards are going to be dewarded. They set up a ward near where they think immunity would go ahead and and try to contest. And well, they have two big blink ultimates up, so they're going to take Roche pretty easily. Is there going to be a smoke? There is a smoke. They're not going to walk around the same way that they did last time. And everyone backs out. Why back out? Bait it. Bait it. Ah, whatever. Everyone very timid, but Chu, just, he likes having money. And I you know, can't blame him. Everyone's thinking they're towards the mid lane. They're actually just smoke ganking the top tier three. All right. Well, I guess you, excuse me. I guess you force a glyph. Are you going to drop Rasta Snakes? Yeah, that's a, that's a glyph. Force. TP's coming in, though. So they'll get some damage on this tower, but... I guess you train an ultimate for about a thousand damage? Not bad. Not bad, dot JPEG. It's also really difficult to, to think not bad without making the not bad face uh, that is prevalent on the internet. And uh, I feel bad every time that happens. Also, Rasta, I didn't really notice this. He actually went BKB. So just does not want to take all that magic damage again just from the epicenter as well as the Ravage. Look at the gold graph. Way, oh god, the EXP and gold just, as we saw, look at all these kills. It's actually just, oh my god. There's only been one kill? There's a, there has not been a kill since about the 32 minute mark? There hasn't been a kill for almost 20 minutes on, on the side of immunity. That is absurd. Anyway, let's look at moving towards Roche. Red starts channeling the epicenter as he sees everyone. He blinks in. He only gets a burrow strike on the one. There's a BKB up on Slick, though. He doesn't use it. Ancient Seal up on Red. But the Ravage comes in, catches five. But he gets hexed up right away. He's going to get shackled again. Wave of Terror is there. He crackens off the disable. Vacuum is going to be wasted. He should probably not have used that, I don't think. But the Tidehunter looks like he's going to go down. Immortality for Chu. He also has his BKB. He's going to be popping that as well. There's so much damage coming out. Double kill immediately for Chu. He's going to take out Slick as well. Just right clicking. He's on a monster kill streak. Leap forward. Arrow on to Goaded. And this is going to be only a Skyrath Mage. A lot. This is, that's, that's game, man. I, I don't know why they're backing up. I think they can go in the game. 
I guess he just wants to go buy his butterfly, or he's buying a satanic. That's not bad as well. There's going to be a satanic coming out for your Marana. So giving him a lot of sustain, a lot of uh, damage in these fights, or sorry, a lot of health in these fights as well. So they're going for the mid tower. They already cut the creep wave. There is backdoor region to fight, but it looks like Isar just, he picked up the cheese. He's just going to be tanking this with his hard trash. Throws out a casual viper strike onto your Skyrath mage, but he has a cloak. He's taking less damage. But anyway, Shagasaur is just wailing on this tier 3 tower. Actually, it looks like Shadow Demon's going for a Scythe of Ice. He is freaking rich. He's 8, 1, and 18. Just a completely different performance we've seen coming out from Insidious as far as this game to the last game. This mid rax is going to go down. This should be 2, I think, because they still have the Aegis. Uh, Darkseer does have Vacuum. He doesn't have Wall, though. Oh, so that's why he vacuumed, because he didn't have Wall anyway. But Blink, Shiva's Guard, Gush as well on the Risk. Risk is dead. Rip. Negative Vengeance War goes on, but he doesn't necessarily care. There's going to be a homing missile there, and there's going to be two sets of Rax. So this is, this is a Rapier game. Like, this Falls has to buy a Rapier, I think. Sell the drums, buy a Rapier. Unless they force Mega Creeps here. They could try to force Mega Creeps. I think that they, they should. This is two racks down. They have, do they have their ultimates? They have Epicenter. They have Ravage in 30 seconds as well. Arcane Bolt coming up. Viper Strike on your Skyrath Mage, but the Blink Hex, he pops the BKB really early. Serpent Wars is coming in. Wall, Vacuum afterwards. That's a lot better, but the Ancient Seal, but sorry, he actually gets defensively disrupted in the meantime. Chu, he might go down, but he has the Aegis of the Immortal on the top side of the fight. Mystic Flare is going to be there, but they just don't care. They're so tanky. They have Pipe, they have Crack, and so they have Hearts. And Shagasaurus, he's going to have Ravage up in two, three seconds. One second, he's going to have it. He's going to blink Ravage onto the Skyrath Mage. It's a buyback from your Gyrocopter. Chu is beyond godlike, but he still has the Aegis of the Immortal. Going to get earned up as well. This is going to be a third set of racks. Creeps are wailing on this tower. And this is a buyback from Gyro, which means he cannot really buy a Rapier. He could go against Mega Creeps and buy the Rapier, but... Can they even... I don't know if they can even win a fight with Rapier. Because he's got a four second BKB. This is really hard. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And Nether Swap onto the most tanky target there. Blink Ravage catches all of them again. Gush kills the Ventral Spirit. Vacuum comes in. Vacuum's in the end of the Mystic Flare, so they all take class damage. But Burrow Strike onto two. Sandstorm is there as well. They don't have the Epicenter, but Balls dies. He does not have a buyback. Two is beyond godlike. Leaps forward. Kills the Skyrath Mage. It's going to be Mega Creep. It's going to be game. GG. After such a strong game in game one, Insidious end up ultimately taking the game and the series two to one what a performance especially from that sand king wow what a game well that is going to be it everyone insidious is going to ultimately take the series two to one mvp definitely that sand king uh two four twenty seven maybe not the best kd in the world but all those team fights are great. Chu got a lot out of that early hand of Midas, and ah, wow, that was what, what a series, everyone! Very back and forth. That was three and a half hours as well for me, starting at 7 a.m. So thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, once again, if you like the content, please check us out on Hefla TV on Facebook and Twitter, Hefla Milk on YouTube. If you liked my casting or hated it, and want to let me know either way, I am Call Me Roxas on Twitter. Uh, if you liked both of these teams, make sure to both check them out in their respective social media and also check out the Join Dota League, which is the uh, tournament that brought you this series as well. So thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Have a good one, and see you next time.